Hi, it's Ashley Brockington with Losing with Sam and Ash and Leader of Team Thrive. Today in How to Look Great in Pictures, we're going to be talking about hair and makeup. And the reason this is important is because if you overlook the hair and makeup factor and you are still comparing yourself, the great picture, if you look great in pictures, with somebody else looking great in pictures or a magazine cover, then most of the time you're going to be overlooking the fact that they have their hair and makeup styled well. That's just the kind of how it is. You know, a lot of times people's hair and makeup are on point. They know how to do it and they take the time. So you can't just take your no effort and compare it to somebody else's, you know, an hour effort, you know, or some, but you're not trying or learning and them like practicing hair and makeup for years and feel, you know, bad. So I want to empower you that don't know anything about makeup with some knowledge to, you know, kind of get a head start. And then, so basically how we're going to do this today is I'm going to start with very basics, kind of let you know what a very basic polish would be that would look better in pictures and then kind of step it up. So if you're like, I can only take the basics, do not overwhelm me. I don't want, you know, transformation. I just want a step up. Then I'll let you know at different points and you can piece out. So right now I have no makeup on. I put moisturizer on my face. Moisturizer is important, especially if you have dry skin because otherwise color will stick to it, you know, in different places and moisture gives beauty to the skin. I'm laughing because I'm thinking of this part in Zoolander where they're like, moisture is the essence of beauty or something like that. Anyway, I, I digress. Okay, so my hair is halfway done. My hair is naturally curly, gets kind of frizzy, so I, dry it and then I curl it. So I'm going to be showing you what I do with my hair in case that helps you. So first, let's start with makeup. So the first thing that I do is I add a base to my eyelids. And everything I learned about hair and makeup, I started learning and practicing when I was in theater because we'd have to do our hair and makeup all the time. Maybe an experiment, we'd learn different techniques to bring like parts of our face, eyes forward, that kind of thing. And then my sister was a professional makeup artist, so I learned a ton there. I was a wedding photographer, so I would watch and ask questions. I even assisted a professional makeup artist every now and then just for fun. I would be the one that put the false eyelashes on. And then I ended up partnering with her, with Hope Henderson, and making the Beauty Mark app that is in the iStore. So that's where I've got kind of my background and where I've learned and as a photographer it was really important that everybody that we did portraits for did have their makeup done and we actually would pay for them to have a professional do it for our senior portraits because we thought it made that big of a difference so let's get started I recommend this Urban Decay eyeshadow primer potion and I just do it with my finger and I have had um, this same tube for probably way longer than you're supposed to, but I mean, I use it every time I put makeup on, and so it is something that will last you a long, long time. Okay, so I'm just kind of dabbing it real softly. You do not want to pull at your um, eye area. You wanna protect the skin. And I usually do just a little bit um, along my lower line right there, just tiny, tiny bit right there. And I do that just for when I have I'm putting eyeshadow on or liner so it will just catch and stick there instead of sticking and catching to my eye. And I used to have a really bad problem with makeup falling under my eyes and kind of giving me the raccoon eye. Some of that is that I don't live in Florida anymore where the moisture is crazy, but a lot of it is that the eye, <laughs> eye makeup is now sticking to my eyeballs instead of falling under my face. Okay, so that's one thing. I will say, you know, I don't get my eyes, um, my eyebrows waxed or anything. I'm looking for my tweezers. So I will say that, you know, you can tell in pictures if you have like totally out of control eyebrows. So even if you don't get your eyebrows waxed, just use the tweezers every now and then. You only want to tweeze underneath, never above. You don't want, like, I don't want to thin my eyebrows out. I actually have really thin eyebrows right here and I hate that. I really don't like that, but it's just what has happened. So I have a base here. So we're going to start with a very basic, non-scary, neutral look. Now I will say that brushes are very important. 
And if you could have, let's see, two brushes, the ones I would recommend are, if you could own just two brushes, um, actually three, what I would recommend are a flat brush. You can see what that looks like. And this is from MAC, I love their brushes. And the number is worn off. But it looks like that. It's not pointed or anything. It's not that, it's not that big. And then I would have a fluffy brush that's a little short, either like this one, this is MAC, this one is Sephora, and this one is similar, but it's got a tiny bit of a taper to it, and I actually like that a lot. This is the Tapered Crease, Pro Tapered Crease Sephora brush. I like that because it blends really well. These are blending brushes, but this one also gets in your crease. So uh, the third one I will show you later, and it's an angled eyeliner brush. This is if I just use three. So I would start with this flat brush, and this is for a very kind of calm, neutral look. And then I would add some type of vanilla, cream looking, I'm gonna add a pigment right now. That's that color. You could also, this is almost out, but you could also use something like that. White white is going to look a little clownish unless you blend it really, really well. But I just add a tiny, tiny bit to the inside, just so it's like a blending, basic blending base, just on the very inside right there. So for this basic look, I'm just gonna use three shades of brown, or kind of taupe. Maybe I'll use four. Um, so the next thing you want is a medium brown. And your medium brown could be anywhere from light brown to dark, and then it also might be warm, or this one is kind of a cool tone. You can see it's a little bit more ashy, and this one has a little bit more yellow and red in it. So those would both be medium browns. So let's see. I'm going to go with the one right now that's ashy. I'm gonna use this flatter brush and get it on there, load it. And then I'm going to put this all over my eyelid. And there is not one way to do makeup, and there are a million different looks you can do. So you know, YouTube and Pinterest are just such good sources. So this is not meant to be like the only type of makeup you can ever do, but I want to just show you how it can make a difference in pictures. So just both eyes, I'm just doing it on the eyelid. I feel like I look like a grandmother when I'm, I should sit up straight, I'm trying to look in the mirror. Okay, so it's not real pretty, nothing great. It's kind of from here and goes around here, from here and goes around here. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is get, I can either use, go ahead and use my flat brush again, or if I wanted to add something else in another brush, I could use a more tapered brush like this. So it's short and tapered. And this is, you can see this is the fluffier one I mentioned. So either way, I'll use the flat one because I mentioned that, and I'll just go in with a little bit of a darker, Brown. Now, depending on how intense you want it, I'll start with the lighter version of this and then go darker. This is just a little, this is not really a darker brown. This is just a darker medium brown. This would be, it's kind of worn out, a darker brown. So closer to like a chocolate, like what a dark chocolate would look like. So let's just start, like I said, with the lighter, dark, or the darker medium. And so now I'm going to just put it in my crease and I'm just kind of like dabbing it, placing it there. I know, it looks cray cray. So I'm the outside right there and then dabbing it, this kind of like a stippling effect into there. So this is more of a natural look. And then I wanna take my blending brush. You can either use the one that's a little bit tapered or you can use the one that's not tapered and fluffy. And I'm just going to kind of do little circles and blend what I've got. So I'm kind of blending little circles from the inside and up and out. So like this would be kind of the corner that we would, you don't want to be like brushing it up there, but if it ends up there, you want to rather have it be up there to open your eyes than um, towards the inside. Can you see that? So this is very, very, very neutral. 
And if you feel like, oh, I can't get the, you know, it's not blending well, well, that's okay. You can just keep going back and forth with color. So like if I have that more vanilla color again, get a little bit on there, you can kind of work it in again on the inside and then on the brow bone for a highlight. So this isn't, this really is not intense or a lot of makeup at all. So let's just stop there for, like I said, for those of you that are kind of like, this is a big step anyway. I always do the eye makeup first, so like I said, it doesn't fall under here. So next let's do eyeliner. There's two types of eyeliner you can use. You can use a pencil eyeliner or you can, well actually there's lots of times, types, two types I use, a pencil or I use like a liquid, it's a, not a liquid, it's a gel pot like that with a angled skinny brush. And this pot is Maybelline iStudios and it's a lot cheaper than the MAC stuff, but I think it works just as well. And this type of formula is just going to run dry faster. So I figure why not have something that, you know, save a little bit of money if it's going to dry out before I can use it all up anyway. So let's first talk about a pencil. You want your pencil to be relatively sharp. This one isn't super sharp, relatively sharp. But if you're going to use a pencil, this is what I only used to use. Then you just want to take it at an angle, not like this. And you're just going to kind of, once again, it's a little bit of a stippling effect. I usually start in the middle just to make sure my hand's steady and just kind of dot it along the lash line. To the inner corner, but in the inner corner, make sure you don't get it too big. So I dot it along the lash line. Okay, so that just defined it just a little bit. I haven't done a wing. I'm not doing anything super stylistic. Now, if you only have the brushes I talked to you about, like the fluffy and the flat one, then you can stop there. I think it looks best if you put a little bit of dark, like black, or whatever eyeliner color you're using, shadow over this, because it just fuzzes it out just a little bit and sets it. So you could use that angled brush you have. You could also use, if you have tapered brush, or you can see I have collected brushes over the years, or a flat brush like that. So I would put it in some dark, and then what I would do is I would just gently, very carefully press, just dab kind of I guess would be the best word, that black shadow on top of that black liner. And what it's gonna do is, you know, if you were kind of stippling the liner on, it's going to smooth it out. So I'm sure you can't see a huge difference. I mean, you can get, go totally do a ton of stuff from here. You could, you know, blend it more, and I'll, I'll, we'll do that in a second. We'll um, get a little bit more dramatic. I just am trying to show like, when you look at a picture and someone like looks natural, but just great, this is kind of the baseline they're doing. So let's say that you are done with your eye makeup for the most part just gonna keep it real natural. Now you also could put a little bit of like the medium brown or the dark brown right here on just the outside, just a dab of it to kind of connect um, and have your eyes like look at the corners of them. So then the next thing I would do is my skin to even out my skin tone. So if you have trouble areas, then you can put a complexion stick, a um, concealer, you can get, this is from Sephora, I really, really like it, but there's also creams that you can use and put on with a brush or your finger, um, all sorts of different types of concealers. Another tool that you might wanna use is a primer. And so what a primer is, I never got this, but this is you know, what I did in my eyes, so it would stick. It's the same thing for your face makeup so that it sticks, but it also, this is important as you age, it, they usually have some silicone in it and they um, they fill in tiny little wrinkles. So they're usually just clear. They might be white. Well, this one's a little bit yellow. 
And so I just put it, just dab it on my face. Just like, it just creates a smooth surface so that makeup isn't like, you know, sticking to the um, super oily patches or, you know, flaking up on the dry. So kind of go like this. This is a brush that I love. It's from It Cosmetics by Jamie Kern. And my husband actually, I sent him once before photo shoot to Ulta and he picked this out and it's like butter on your skin. I love it. All right, so I have this base. So then foundation, or let's go with um, the concealer first. So, I mean, really it's just wherever you have blemishes or red. I usually have a little bit of broken blood vessels right under my nose. You wanna go crazy if you want to put a little under your, oops, I put too much there, eyes to wake you, you know, brighten that up just a little bit. If it's dark, you can. And then also if you, so if you did get too much eyeshadow while we were doing eye makeup, you, the reason you do it first is so that if you did, you can take eye makeup remover and just sweep it up and get a clean line like that without taking your makeup off, like your face makeup. Um, you also can, if you're using concealer, just kind of, you know, move it up so it's along those lines and just cleans everything up. Oops, this is coming out like crazy right now. All right, so the next would be foundation. So I have a million types of foundation that I use. I have this CC cream. So it's six in one, it's got color correction, some SPF. It's kind of just like a tinted moisturizer slash foundation slash sunscreen. So I really do like this. It's all by Botanica and I got it because of how natural it was. And then when summer came, this is Fair Delight, and I got a little darker, then I got something different. I also had a more full coverage um, foundation from Cover FX and this one is cream but it's in it's in a, looks like a pressed powder almost. And then I have a Bare Minerals one that's kind of my current darker shade. In this one, you use like the Kabuki brush with, um, which I really like this, but I feel like my skin has been a little bit dry, so I don't really want the powdery effect. So let's use this one today, like it's just a cream, and like I'm going to use this brush and just dab it on there, and then I'm just gonna dab it I don't need a lot of full coverage. Now, if you need like a ton of full coverage, then you can use foundation or concealer as your kind of first base um, because it really is going to cover um, better. So you, I think it would be better to use a concealer, more of it where you needed, and then a lighter foundation than just caking on foundation. The other thing is it's better to start with just a very light touch of foundation all over and then build, you know, let it kind of set for just a second and then build, then to like scoop it up and not that anybody's gonna do it like that. I'm putting it on like this. So I really like the dewy look. So this is going to give me more of that. Just evening out my skin tone. So if you are doing the basics, I would stop right here with your foundation. The next thing I would do if we're just going for the basics is I would use a blush. And so you can use all types of blush. This kind of a peppy, peachy pink. Just gonna lightly load the brush. Put it just on the apples of my cheeks. You don't want it in towards your nose or it's gonna make it look dry. All right, and I'm almost done. So I need to do uh, um, mascara my eyebrows and lips for this basic look. So let's do brows first. Do not be afraid of filling in your brows, shaping them, filling them in. Don't be afraid of that. First thing, I would take a wand that looks like this. You can buy them at Sephora or wherever, but I just was like, I want one now. So I took an old mascara wand and I washed it off really, really well, dried it off. So that's what I use. So I'm going to brush my brows up and then over and then down to give them a curve. So up, over, and then down. And then to actually color 
fill in, you can use a powder. I've got this palette, my kids dug into it, so it's a little wonky. Or a pencil, I love the pencils. And you can just kind of go like that, especially the ones that kind of wind up. The problem is that I just go through them really quickly, like once a month, once every two months. And so it just gets expensive and I don't have time to do that. So the powders last longer. So you just dab it on your brush. This is kind of like a thicker angled, real bristly brush. And I am just going to follow, fill in and follow my eyebrow shape. And if you don't have eyebrows, or you have very few, then this is something that's really important to, you know, just practice, and it is okay. So, kind of the stippling effect once again, tapping. And you can see that I need it more on the inside, not so much on the outside. So I just have to be careful if I'm going to shape it on the outside. And a lot of women, as they age, their eyebrows are gonna just st start balding and start over here. So I think it's really cool how it gives a more youthful look as you start to fill them in. And because that's a sign of youth, is thicker eyebrows. Let's say go off Frida. All right. So then I could just use this little brush again and this kind of spreads it out a little bit or if you need to get rid of some, you can do that. Okay, so that would be my eyebrows. Then mascara, you can use almost any type of mascara. I think the drugstore ones work great, like CoverGirl. I got this one from Mary Kay from somebody because I wanted something really light that separated. And then I also love my unique Moonstruck Natural. It's like the 3D mascara. Um, it's really cool. So I'll use both of these today. I usually just use this Mary Kay one first, just wiggle it back and forth because I think it separates my lashes doesn't get as clumpy as the unique. And I like to use it on the bottom lashes. So if you haven't used the unique, I do like it. You put it on basically like a, I mean it says it's a gel, but it's basically like a mascara. Put it on that regularly. And then it has another, so another wand that's got these little fibers on it. I don't know if you can see it there. They're like cotton candy, almost exactly. And so you just put that on the tips. So I love this stuff because it gives more of a false eyelash effect, but I just don't wear false eyelashes every day. Not that I wouldn't, not that I'm against it. I just don't. So then you let it kind of stick for a second and you use that same first step gel or whatever. And it just like evens out those little cotton candy fibers. I know, make funny faces. All right. So yeah, I mean, it takes a second. I love this stuff. I love it, I love it, I love it. All right, so. I'm almost done. Last thing I'm going to do is lipstick. So you have lots of options for lip color. I love some of the drugstore options. This is CoverGirl Outlast. It's a stain. And don't put it on like, like a marker. It does go on like a marker. I just tap it so it actually looks like a stain and then rub your lips together. This is another CoverGirl one and it's more like a crayon. It's like a stain but it's, it's just a sheer. Kind of goes on sheer and less like pigment. There are also traditional lipsticks. Love Chanel. Love it, love it, love it. And then I also love my thicker stains. I've got one from Chanel and one from Sephora. They go on really thick. You put like a gloss over them and the great thing is they just stay all day. Um, and then I've got a neutral color. So today let's go with a neutral color because we're just doing a natural look. And first thing I'm going to do, you can skip this, you don't have to do it, as I'm going to use this MAC liner and it's boldly bare. And I'm just going to kind of do a flat, not like this again, and outline the outside of my lips. Just really lightly. Okay, now here's a cool little trick. Your little doo -doo 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 lip bumps. <laughs> 
what are these called? You can make them have a more round look if you shape them up instead of going down. So if I go like this, instead of going like, er, 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 I go up, up, up and around, then it's going to give a more kind of Cupid soft lip look. So then I was going to put on this neutral and you can just put it on there or you can use a lip brush. This is a really cool collapsible one for your purse so your purse doesn't get grimy from Sephora. And I would just take a little bit of the lip color, and this is kind of a cream, and then just lightly apply it. There you go. There you go. From there, if you wanted to add gloss, you can. You can add a clear gloss, a colored gloss. You could do something like this that's a little bit lighter and put it just in the middle. And then it just kind of gives you a little pot right there. So this is my basic natural makeup look. 